Hey guys, how's it going? It's been a while since we've done a video on anything Questcraft related. In fact, I do believe it's been about five months since we've properly taken a look at the game and some of its updates. But of course, within those five months, the Questcraft team has been working hard and a ton of new features have been added. That and of course, the install procedure has been completely changed. So. What is up everyone, I'm Mystical, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to install Questcraft, the latest, newest, easiest method, as well as telling you about all the new features and updates the game has gone through. So, without any further ado, let's get right into it. First things first, for any of you that are new here, Questcraft is exactly what it sounds like, a version of standalone Minecraft Java Edition, for the quest. And installing it is incredibly simple. In the past, I would go through all the most advanced and weirdest options, including those without a PC, but now it's gotten a lot easier, as we have side quests, and side quests not only on our PC, but also on the headset itself. So for both of these methods, you will require side quest or actually an Android phone, as you can also use that to install side quest on your quest. So first method first, for the purpose of both of these, I have uninstalled Questcraft from my device in order to start from scratch, like most of you probably will be. Make sure you have developer options enabled on your quest. I won't be showing you how to do that here, as it's not a very difficult procedure, and there's tons of videos on how to do that already. Once you have developer mode on, connect your quest to your PC. Accept any dialogues that might show up inside your quest if this is your first time doing so, and make sure that the headset shows up in the top left of side quest. Once you have that, search up Questcraft on side quest, or, you know, just find it as it's usually on the first page, and click download app. Sideload. It's that simple. It used to have a ton of other things involved as well with like copying a zip file, extracting some files. Now it's that simple. It's one button. You literally cannot mess this up. And then of course, once you have it installed to launch the game, you go into your headset, click in the top right here, select unknown sources and Questcraft should be showing up right there inside unknown sources on your headset. But it gets even easier as in case you don't know this, SideQuest now has a version for your quest inside the headset itself. So if you've ever installed SideQuest on your quest in the past, you no longer need a PC, like ever, which is why it's so great. You should definitely do it. Like borrow a PC from someone if you don't have one or go to the library and just install SideQuest on your quest. It'll come in super handy for the future and for this. So in case you do have SideQuest inside your quest, launch that, find Questcraft inside SideQuest on your quest, and just click install. I mean, it's that simple. It literally does not get any easier. There's nothing to stretch out here. There's no difficulty or anything like that. The only thing that I can say is, you know, to install side quests on your quest, you obviously need a PC or, or an Android phone, because you can also install side quest on your quest using the side quest app on the Android Play Store, which of course you will also need developer mode on for, and you will need either an OTG adapter or a USB type C to USB type C cable. But once you have one of those, all you do is you connect your quest to your Android phone using one of those two options and launch SideQuest on your phone and just uh, install it from there. It's really simple. The SideQuest app literally makes all of this way too easy. So once you have Questcraft on your quest, well, you can either jump right into the game and have some fun or I can tell you about all the new features and updates that they're adding. And I also have some really exciting sneaky peeky news for you guys towards the end that I'm pretty sure I don't think anyone else has talked about because they DM'd me about this to, to get this out there. So this is really exciting. Let's get right into the updates and new features. So largest feature first, and this isn't actually on Questcraft's side. In the past, you would need to have Minecraft Java in order to be able to play Questcraft. That is no longer there. And that is actually all thanks to Microsoft, as since the merging of accounts, you now own both the versions, which I was actually wrong about in the last video, and multiple people confirmed that yes, as a matter of fact, if you own Minecraft Microsoft Edition, you now also own Minecraft Java Edition. So if you own one of the versions, you now own both. So that's really exciting because of course, more people will be able to play. First of all, they've added a mod manager. This is really exciting as the mod manager will now allow you to install mods from directly within the headset. In the past, installing mods on Questcraft was kind of a chore. I mean, you had to connect it to the PC, find the right folders, and just kind of drag them in like you would to the normal percent app data percent folder on your PC. You know, standard Minecraft Forge Edition installations. However, here, that becomes a lot easier, as now there is a mod manager. Now, these mods are not for Minecraft Forge, they are for Fabric, as that is what Questcraft is based on. So not all mods will work. However, there's a ton of mods for Fabric that actually improve the performance of the game, and there's even a recommended mods list that you can check out on the Questcraft Discord. This is actually a really, really big thing. They've added immersive controls, and this one is massive. This is something 
something a lot of people ask for. What are immersive controls? Well, imm immersive controls are the thing that makes the game more realistic. This is personally my favorite feature, as it allows you to punch blocks, for example, in order to break them, which is, of course, part of the game. I mean, punching the trees, you know, is definitely part of the game here. So they've added that. That was definitely one of the most requested features for them to add to the game, but I do need to make it very clear that some servers will ban you for using immersive controls. Questcraft does work on multiplayer, this is fully blown Java edition, but just as using any mods on certain servers will get you banned, Questcraft is no different, especially since you can actually punch blocks without looking at them, which of course would look quite sketchy on a server like Hypixel for example. I wouldn't recommend joining Hypixel with this by the way, Hypixel has had a uh, long history of banning me for using using Vivecraft. So this is kind of no different to Vivecraft when it comes to that kind of thing. So I like certain servers, you know, I just wouldn't risk it on. Of course, if you're joining Questcraft server or any server that fully blown allows mods or allows VR, then you're ready and off to go. They've added haptics which of course means vibrations. They've added teleportation, for those of you that have motion sickness out there, you know, that's really handy. They've added SVC, simple voice chat compatibility, which of course, if you install it, you will now have voice chat compatibility within Minecraft, which is epic. I mean, that is part of playing the game in VR, if you ask me, especially in multiplayer. And of course, again, they have their own server. So if you want to join that, I'm pretty sure they're using most of these on there. So simple voice chat, really, really cool. Added support for Minecraft 1.19.2 and Minecraft 1.18. To dual install, so of course that's a pretty big deal. The latest versions of Minecraft are now supported. There was this massive thing in the past where you had to install compatible Java versions and all the good stuff. That's all gone now, really, really simple. The toast is disabled by default in options.txt. Mod manager has auto updates built in, so that's really cool. Your mods will auto update. JNA is now initialized by default. I'm not entirely sure what JNA stands for, but I'm almost certain it has something to do with Java. Fabric is now the only version shown by default, so for those of you out there that were confused or couldn't find the right fabric version on your big long versions list, fabric is now the only version shown by default, so you can't miss it, you can't mess it up. Updated holy GL4ES? I'm almost certain this is some sort of rendering engine or something, I could be completely wrong here, it could have absolutely nothing to do with what I'm saying. Some of these things are technical stuff that of course I'm not going to know, but they're posting the full changelog for those of you that are interested. Fixed using system, EGL, for creating the P buffer surface, exactly what I'm talking about, no no clue what this is. I developed like one game in my life and it sucked. So, you know, fixed quick chat issue that I can attest to <laughs> more performance by canceling desktop rendering epic. Screen overlays getting much closer to sodium. They are. They have texted me, DM'd me about this. They are getting much closer to sodium. Not quite there yet. Sodium is something sort of like Optifine, but uh, you, of course, Optifine works with Forge. Sodium is the version for Fabric, and they haven't quite gotten that to work yet, but they are getting much closer to it. Actually, before I tell you about the big, big deal, App Lab is being worked on, but not quite there yet. This is something that I asked about. I didn't want to push about it. I hate asking about ETAs and stuff like that. I know development is a hard, hard thing, and I don't want to be pushing. I don't want to be asking for ETAs or things that, you know, I know people want an ETA, but App Lab, of course, would be the kind of end goal here. No no more using PC, no more developer options. And I know that they had an App Lab version. However, that didn't work for some reason. At least that's as much as I got from their chat. In fact, I believe it was posted for some time and then taken down. Um, but yeah, so App Lab did work somewhat and then and then stopped from what I understand. Publishing deal with Y. VR. This is the big deal. They're working on a publishing deal with YVR, a Chinese standalone headset company. So that is, of course, quite a big deal for Questcraft. They're working on a publishing company. That's how far this team has come with a Chinese VR company. I know a lot of you are against these Chinese VR headsets, but hear me out as this headset definitely seems to be quite interesting. I'm not going to go through everything about it here because, well, there's, there's quite a lot. It does seem to be sort of like a Cambria, to be honest, or at least that kind of form factor. But this is quite a big deal. This seems to be quite an interesting headset. And again, I will do more research on it, digest it, and make a fully blown video where I talk about this. But that's one damn sexy headset, just saying. Of course, Cambria will be released soon, hopefully talked about during Meta Connect. But yeah, I'm quite excited for the Questcraft team here. They're working incredibly hard. They've added a lot of the things people have asked for. Of course, this is Questcraft release 2.0, so it's quite a big deal, quite a large update. And instantly when people find issues and talk about them, 
they tend to fix them quite quickly. Of course, in their announcements, I've seen them talking about it, people talking about issues, and then them fixing them and pushing the update. So they have been working quite rigorously, but uh, yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you guys found today's one useful or interesting, you know, if, in case you wanted to hear about the updates and stuff, but that is going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, this button does work too, but let me know why down in the comment section below. If you guys are not yet part of our community, check out the Discord down below, check out our Reddit. I want to see you posting your spicy memes on there. Of course, check out the Questcraft Discord down below as well. Thank you so much to all the patrons supporting this channel. You guys helped me out a ton, paying my bills, paying my subscriptions, and overall helping me make these videos better. And if you guys want to support the channel, of course, all links are down below. But that is it. If you guys want to be notified about future content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace. But due to a extremely popular demand, we're here again.